No, I just went back out and went back in. Thank you. Hello. I think you're on mute right. there. There we go. All right. There you go. I was, it was literally like at 1058. I'm like, dude, I got to run to the bathroom. All right. <laughs> I'd rather do it before, man. Yeah, no worries. I'm just turning my phone off here. Bum, bum, bum. Cool. How are you doing? You know, the usual the usual kind of like Luca Dan week, which means borderline insanity. Um, but aka normal. Yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> Raginess equals normal, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I didn't really have a, a topic. I think I heard you're doing a book and I didn't know if you wanted to maybe chat about that or we whatever could. topics you got in mind. I'm down with whatever. I am down with whatever, man. I mean, the, uh, the book is pretty much about um, it's like the six C's of building a fitness business. I'm actually figuring out the the name. I think the, the name is going to be um, the Fit Pros Business Success Playbook. Um and, you know, it's basically three different things like coaching, customer experience, culture. That's the first three foundational C's. And then it's content communication, which is marketing and then conversion, which is basically sales. And then there's like C for consistency, which is your systems. Um, and and then there's a couple other chapters, but like that's kind of like the main premise of the book. So we can riff about that. We can riff yeah. about I mean, it, it really is. I mean, I can go a hundred different ways because I'm, <laughs> I'm a weirdo, but uh. But whatever you feel is going to be best, like I'm down. Yeah, that sounds good. And then uh, you're good for an hour, right? Yeah, I actually got uh, just in case an hour and a half. So we're good. Okay, perfect. Well, I'll just do a short pause and uh, we'll just get into it. Awesome. Hey, and welcome back to the Flex Diet Podcast. I'm here today with Mr. Luca. How are you today, sir? I'm good, man. I am halfway through my can of caffeine, so... Oh, the crescendo is happening. Today? The crescendo is happening. You know, I want it to be at peak levels of caffeine when we do uh, this. <clears throat> what is today's caffeine source? I'm curious now. Oh man, it's a uh, ghost cherry limeade. Oh, okay. for anybody that that knows me knows I'm a I'm a energy drink connoisseur. Uh. You know, I, I I swirl it around like you would a Merlot 87. <laughs> sniff it, spit it out. You know, the whole shebang. But uh, but yeah. What are your my, favorite so, energy drinks? Uh, definitely, I'd say a C four, but uh, Ghost has lately been creeping in. At Ghost, um, Swedish Fish, by the way, is probably my best one. Ghost Swedish Fish is phenomenal. Definitely on the sweet side, but um, I like it exceptional. Again, I think everybody's taste buds are a little bit different, but um, yeah, that's that's probably my favorite currently. And then a, a lot of the C fours, I love the C fours. The they got the Starburst flavors, uh, the orange yeah. slice, the whole shebang. So, yeah, shout out to my buddy Chris Lockwood who works there and worked on that product. So, yeah, it's great. I like it. There you go, baby. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, yeah, thank you for being here. Greatly appreciate it. And then we're gonna chat a little bit about your your book. And it was nice to finally meet you in person at the Raise the Bar seminar. Man, which is several months ago now, which seems crazy how fast time goes by. <laughs> I know, right? It's like I, I, the guys have already hit me up for the next one. That's how fast it flew by. But it was, uh, it was so crazy, man, because like we've we've talked for years. Yeah, yeah. And had like a couple of close <laughs> encounters, missed each other in Austin, I think. At yeah, least you were sitting at place. a coffee shop across, and I just happened to send you a message, and I'm like, "Where are you at?" And you're like, "Oh, I'm in a coffee shop in Austin." I was like, and we figured out the address, and you were literally like two blocks away but you had something going on and i was at paleo effects and i had to go run and do a presentation and yeah, yeah it's just kind of weird <laughs> so it came full circle man i was i was glad that we finally got to connect um which hopefully again it won't take that long for us to you know to physically meet up again yeah and i heard you're gonna learn to kite surf at some point it's on your ever-growing list of things to do yeah, it's it's up there. That that one's probably you know I, I'll I'll have to take it up with you so that it that doesn't become the last year of life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need I need expert guidance for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about what was the idea for doing a book? Because as you know, writing a book is a pain in the ass. Oh, <laughs> I say that as I'm in the process oh, of writing yeah. three different ones right now. And yeah. So you you know, man, oh, um, it sucks. <laughs> I think it, it definitely, yeah, I, I wouldn't call it a, a joyful process. 
Um, no, it never is. And it never seems to get easier. It gets better, no, but it's never no. easy. Absolutely not. It's funny because like I'm the book is kind when I say kind of done, I still got to go back and do uh, some edits and resources. And that feels like writing another book. Um, oh, yeah. Know, and it's been a year and a half. So it's kind of like and I've, I've, you know, I've had help. Uh, Sean Hyacinth's helped me with shout out to him. Awesome. He's great. And, um, he's he's awesome. And uh, and still it's like, whoa. And, you know, I think like the reason I'd actually like to ask you that, too, you know, the 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 reason for writing the book. I think there's a lot of reasons to write the book. I'm not going to judge any of the reasons. I think some folks write it because it's like I need a business card, you know. Yeah. Um, and I've <laughs> done a couple of those where I write chapters for certain books and they're collaboed books. And that was kind of the point. Like, hey, I've been in a book. You know, I look back and I do a little bit of cringe. I mean, I thought the work was good, but it was like cringe the reason why I did it a little bit uh, more on the marketing side. But this this book was actually like one of those moments where you go, I got to get this stuff out of me. You know, I got two basically two books in me that I knew I had to do and write. And then it was like, which one do I write first? Um, and it was I, I just felt like the relevancy of it uh, for this one, which by the way, it might not be called this. I actually, this is the first place I'm saying it oh, um, wow. ever. So uh, we might change it, but I do think it's sure. going to go this this way, where it's uh, the Fit Pros Business Success Playbook. You know, and I, I I play basketball, so I always thought about like this X's and O's. You know, the cover has this playbook on on, on how to succeed, and it's for coaches. You know, because folks would say like, hey, you know, you should probably do a gym owner book, and I was like, mm, the, the, only the last chapter is like. Oh, so you want to start a gym? You know, that's the last chapter, right? <laughs> and it has, I, I think that chapter could be a mini book about, uh, you know, starting a successful gym, bringing it to cash flow profitable. Um, but the rest of it is really for any coach because I think it's principle based. You know, I wanted to write a book that's principle based that has, yeah, all the current, you know, there's strategies and tactics in it. So whether it's social media, you know, the different ways that you can deliver the content. But, but, but the thing is, below that is principles, right? So if in 10 years, Maybe there's different platforms. Maybe there's different technologies, but the principle of it is the same. You know, that's, that's why I always tell people like, if you want to get good at marketing or influence persuasion, it's like you study the the kind of foundations of it, and you go back and you read, you know, copywriting uh, from the greats, right? And you read marketing from the greats, and then all the stuff that's new as far as platforms go, that's easier to figure out. It's kind of like training, right? Like you understand you or, or nutrition, like you learn the principles in depth and then it's easier to stack methods, tactics, strategies on top of that. Um, and I, and I, you know, I, I think that that's unfortunate sometimes that in our field, there's a lot of that surface, you know, what's the thing, what's the tactic, what's the strategy. Um, but with it, without a deeper understanding of, just like the body, you know, in business and marketing, it's the same thing, like understand the principles. And for me, like I, I was, um, I did a presentation at, at my own summit years ago. And that's what kind of made me uh, turn it into the book, because I was like, you know what, if there's, you know, what, what's the three things that I feel like you got to have, I don't care if you're a one on one coach, uh, I don't care if you have, a, you know, you're, you're working out of another place. You know, if you start your own gym, there's these, I believe, three C's that are foundational to your success. And that is coaching, which is our, that's our craft, right? Yeah, that's totally. literally the thing that we, you know, that, that we do our, our skill set. But then there's these two other ones that are, um, I, I've, I've done my best to operationalize them in the book, right? Because sometimes they're talked about like in the ether, um, which is customer experience and culture. And um, culture, you know, if, if you wrap it up in one sentence, to me is like how we do things around here. Um, you know, and, Unfortunately, you can also do things in a shitty way around here <laughs> and then people leave and go like, don't go there. Um, <laughs> and, and so, I, you know, I, I really thought about it and I said, well, for any coach that's starting off, I think that's the thing that you want to do well first, those three. And to be honest, like, you know, I've seen businesses in, in my business from the start. It was like, I just put so much effort into those that my business grew. The word of mouth, the referrals, um, you know. That did such a uh, such a job that it took it to a certain place. And then the other three C's to me is like, hey, if you want to build a business bigger and you want to, you know, obviously scale it and have uh, more predictability in your lead generation and marketing and sales and things like that. Yeah. Then you then you and you want to build a brand, which I think is important. You know, I think it is important. We can talk about that a little bit. Um, then you got to have things like, you know, content and 
marketing, you know, actual marketing that is clear and concise about how you can help people, you know, who you are, how you can help people, what to do next, uh, which is a lot of kind of like what I love from Donald Miller, because it's very, very simple, you know, it's, it's simple to understand. Um, and same thing with sales, you know, like your, your, your business lives and dies by sales. And, you know, in this industry, I've seen a lot of really, really good coaches that had some type of, um, I would say deeper disconnect with money, or, you know, uh, I would say not a great relationship with money and, or didn't practice the skill of selling and they didn't, you know, su succeed either. They didn't succeed or they didn't succeed as uh, nearly as much as they could have. Right. Uh, because they didn't have that. So, you know, over the course of like now, it's been almost 20 years of me coaching. You know, we started the first gym in Slovenia 17 years ago. Um, you know, this has been a lot of trial and error and, and uh, failure slash lessons that, that have brought me to this place. And I wanted to kind of create this playbook for coaches to go like, look, man, like, this, you know, we live in a era today. You know, when I started, I mean, 90% of the things that we use today wasn't even around, right? The yeah. social media platforms, you know, the things we're now, I mean, the for instance, I, 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 I built a studio inside of my gym, you know, for an amount of money that, you know, the guy that was helping me build it he said, Hey, look, he said this switcher and he showed me the switcher, you know, between cameras and stuff like that. He said, look at 10 years ago, this switcher was $35,000, <laughs> this, this, this switcher. And I'm like, what? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, that's how much it costs. He's like, literally you, this, he said, that's like 2018 to 20 grand. Like this would have been like 150 to 200,000. Like you couldn't, and what you would have had to have a team to operate this, you know, and it's like now, honestly, you don't need that. You need that. You got this, you got this damn phone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's it. And you could pretty much run a business from it. Right. So, which there's a lot of benefits to that, but I think it's also become a handicap a little bit. Right. Cause I, I, I grew up in an era where, you know, I was like sticking yard signs in or like two weeks free trial. You know, I was <laughs> talking to people all day long. I mean, I was doing lunch and learns. It basically, you know, and, and I do want to touch touch base on this a little bit, which is part of the book, is that I think because of technology and the ease of technology, that people have lost their way of, you know, what some would call guerrilla marketing or boots on the ground, you know, low cost, no cost marketing. Um, by the way, there's always a cost, you know, cost is your time and energy, time, but yeah. not, not money. And, and I, I feel that the best thing is to kind of gel the, what people consider the old with the new, right? It's not like an either, or it's an, and, and it amplifies each other. And so, you know, when I, again, you know, building up the book and thinking about those three C's and remember putting it out in that first presentation. And so many people came to me, you know, and we're just like, dude, you got to write a book about this. Right. And I was like, oh, okay. Because it just, it, it was, it was clear, right. The C's were just like, People think in threes, um, you know, it's like that's Donald Miller talks about this in story brand all the time. You know, you make three to five points, but be it's better if it's three. Right. And it's like, OK, well, what's the foundation? What's these three C's and what you know, what's the next step? Like what how do we scale and enhance it? OK, it's these next three C's. You know, the thing that I didn't go into, uh, I went into a little bit, but is, you know, now if you build a company hiring leadership, uh, you know, and, and putting people on your team, I think. There, there's room for another book there, but uh, but I really wanted to make it for, you know, coaches in this industry. And the reason why is because, like, it has this industry still has such a high turnover, right? But I still I feel it's the best industry in the world. Like what we do and how much we can influence people, I think is incredible. Um, you know, I may be biased because again, we've you know between our two gyms, we've now had like I think twelve thousand people come through that we've coached to you know to success. Um, and, you know, just one, every time, like after all these years, when somebody goes like, Hey man, like my life changed once I came here and, you know, it was this three years later, I've not just lost weight, but got confidence, sustainable, this, that, you know, I, that never gets old to me. It, it never becomes like, Oh yeah. Okay. It's just another one. Like yeah. <laughs> I always get this feeling this high. And when I look at it, you know, it's like, we're probably in the worst place we've been health wise as a country. And, you know, you, you, you can't, go to the macro level necessary and change anything. But on a micro level, right, in your community, these people that come through our gyms or if you do online coaching or if you're in person, you know, uh, and, and you're out of another place, like you you affect that one person. And then that person's a, a lighthouse for maybe their kids and their family. Um, and their friends are like, oh, you got in shape. So it, it, it started it kind of, it's a ripple that creates a wave and influences more people. You know, now if you do that with a hundred people, a thousand people, I mean, you've affected maybe 
thousands. If you do stuff online, you know, which was one of my kind of uh, driving forces is that, you know, now there's half a million people on these different platforms that follow me. Okay, cool. I can influence in, in a positive way. Right. I, I, that, and that's what, like, that's where this whole thing came from is like, Hey, how can I help um, create a framework for people to be successful? Cause here's the deal. If you're in an industry for three years and you affect XYZ people, but if you're in an industry for 30, right, that's 10 X and that's going to compound and you're going to coach more people and your brand's going to grow. Now you might have affected, you know, a hundred thousand people. Now, if we can get, you know, a hundred thousand coaches to affect a hundred thousand people over their lifetime, like, man, that's, that's some pretty gnarly impact. And that's kind of where, where it all stemmed from. And, and it was like, a, I have to write this book. It wasn't like a, all right, let me sit down and see strategically how, you know, cause <laughs> as you know, it is a, it's man, it's a ton of work. It's a ton of work. It's not for the light of heart. And you gotta, um, you know, there, there's days where like, oh, dude, I don't know if I want to write this book. Right. And, <laughs> you just, and you just keep going. So that's really, um, where it started, but I, you know, to dive into those foundational C's. Cause I, I want to give, you know, I think it's important to give some um, principles, but also like tactical strategic stuff. Right. And for example, on, on the coaching part, you know, like what uh, coaching, I was actually just talking to Brett Bartholomew about this, right? Like what, what are the th kind of, again, back to the three components, <laughs> three components of coaching, right? Uh, well, number one, all coaching is underpinned by communication. It's, it's a social. So coaching is a social interaction underpinned by communication. That's the actual scientific term for it. Right. So there is no coaching without communication um, and, and social interaction. So there's three things. There's communication, there's problem solving, and then there's the technical expertise. Right. Uh, and I think, by the way, I think the technical expertise is very important. Uh, that's your program design, understanding biomechanics, understanding, you know, biophysiological changes and the said principle and the progressive role principle and all these different things. Yes, you got to know. Them. And it's coaching and queuing. Like, hey, how many different tools do I have in my toolbox to coach this RDL up? Right. But I, hey, but I got to know anatomy to know if they're in a crappy position. Like that, like that's really important. And I think that the pendulum has swung. So I think there's some people that are really good at that stuff. And I think there's some people that suck at that. Right. And the people that suck at that should get better at it. And the people that are really good at that usually need a lot more of communication problem solving, right? Because the problem solving is twofold. It's like uh, somebody comes in and, hey, you know what? I've got this issue. My knee's feeling a certain way, this, that, and the other, right? And now you can problem solve from a standpoint of like, you know how to change the exercises. You know how to modify and not make them feel like crap, like they can't do stuff. Problem solving might be on the nutritional end. Right. You created a plan. Things aren't going to plan, but you know how to problem solve. Right. And you're good at going like, hey, OK, this isn't working out. Which one of these three different ways that have helped other clients that I coach seems the best fit for you. Right. So you give them some autonomy. Boom. And they, they take that. Right. So developing problem solving skills, which some of it is, you know, learning. And then some of it is just experience, like on kind of on the battlefield. Right. Meaning you got to get your reps in. Like there's no way that you can be in the books and do the theory and go like, ha ha, I got it. Like, mm -hmm. you've got to coach, you got to coach a lot, a lot. Right. And then you have the communication part, which I believe could probably be the one that's the most under, um, let's just say underutilized from a standpoint that when I go in and I fly around the country and do consulting for gyms and speak and this, that, and the other, and I'll say stuff like, all right, you know, we talk about these three C's and we talk about coaching and communication and they're like, yeah, that's really important. So, okay. How much have you guys practiced this? And they're like, what do you mean? I said, okay, you've had an in staff. Did you work on communication skills? Um, and they're like, uh, no. Okay. Do <laughs> you have like, what are, what are the tools that you're going through? Maybe did you read crucial conversations and go through a course and then worked on it together as a team with the role play? Uh, no. So, so then it becomes like, whoa, you know, the thing that's really important, actually, it's the underpinning of coaching, literally scientifically, right? You're practicing it zero. Now, somebody will go like, no, but every day I'm talking to people and I'm doing this, that, and the other, right? Yeah. But the thing is, how are you doing that? You're doing it as well as you know how to right now, right? And I'll, I'll give a, an example of, um, I don't know if you know Craig Weller. Uh, that was with Precision Nutrition, but you yeah, know, Craig told I know Craig. He's awesome. 
he's he's awesome and he's told his story about surfing you know he surfed for many years and he was like well i was mediocre at best right and he said then i went to the surf camp for a week and i improved 10x but the thing is is that what i realized that for years i was practicing crappy habits yeah right <laughs> so i got really good at being shitty at some things and that became that's why he's like i couldn't grow i couldn't progress through that even though i was putting in a lot of hours what i thought i didn't know what i didn't know and so this is what's happening a lot of times with communication you know communication is a is a million different things it's listening it's body language right it's uh again active listening is is how to respond is how you ask questions uh it's is you know verbal nonverbal you have a lot of different things that that fall underline but my point is is that people are like yeah well but i'm talking to clients a lot i'm doing this a lot but what you're doing is what craig was was doing with surfing which is you're practicing probably a lot of bad habits and you don't even know what you're doing that's not great and you're just repeating it over and over and over it's actually harder to get out of that right and so there has to be, you know, a training and a, this is why, I mean, that's why I'm such a curious person. I'm obsessed with, you know, this, this industry and with coaching, because it's like, Hey, I might be doing some things shitty and I've just repped it like hundred thousand times. Now I'm going to have to break that pattern. So you have to first, you know, create awareness around your weak links. You know, I would say, you know, aware, uh, assessment precedes awareness and awareness precedes change. Um, you know, and what could be an assessment? You know, I love like, record yourself coaching. Mm -hmm. I asked the client, like, hey, is it cool? Like, I'm, I want to record a session. I'm not going to put it out anywhere. It's just for me. So I can see how I'm doing and improve myself. Guess what? Nine out of 10 will say yes, no problem. Or, you know, lapel mics now. I mean, they cost nothing. And legitimately, you can maybe you don't get a vis uh, visual of it. But you get an audio and you record your whole session. Right. And the, here's the other thing. You can assess it, but somebody else can assess it. Right. That's that's what I've done, too, in, in, in my business and my coaching, where I'm saying, hey, listen, record this, record this or record the sales stuff. Right. Like I say, hey, look, record the sales stuff. It's not going out to anybody. We're going to listen to it. We're going to break it down. We're going to find opportunities, how to improve. Be like, hey, see what you did here. All right. What's another way that you could have done this? But we'll, we'll go through training of what's a better way. Right. And um, I'm bringing this up because I would love to like, it, Mike, if you were like, let's talk training. Dude, you know, record the podcast <laughs> for a week because it's I love it. Like I'm I'm a geek about that stuff, right? Um, but I I would say that I've you know, yeah. Again, when I said those three components, I think some people need a lot more work on the technical side. But but let me tell you this: almost everybody needs work on the communication side of coaching. Okay, I've done this for so long, and I've you know I've been like obsessed for the last decade about this. And I feel like I'm just getting started with it right now. Now, my point is that you, you can never get too good at that. Right. And when you, you know, I remember when I, when I was working at vision quest and I, I, when, if, when I veer off with stories, I always connect the dots so that you're not going like, where the hell is this dude going with this? <laughs> um, I, I worked at a big box gym after LA fitness called vision quest. And I was doing really well. I mean, I was meaning I was, I was having a lot of clients and whatnot, but you know, I always, I was looking at one coach that like her expertise of the technical side was honestly like probably a two to three out of 10, right? Her retention was amazing. Amazing. I mean, like she probably 60 to seven, this is a big box gym, right? So I would say 60 to 70% of her clients she had for like years and years and years, which is even more difficult when you don't have your own place and culture, right? So this is out of a big sure. box gym. And I was just like, dude. What the, you know, my, of course, my judgment side pops up. Cause I'm like, you know, what the hell? Like, dude, I'm like, you know, studying this stuff inside and out. Like you know, I'll run circles around, like what is going on? Like, how is she doing this? You know, and until I started just observing and I would talk to her and I'd see what she would do, you know, how she would talk to people. She was really good at listening, like exceptionally good at listening to where it was just like she'd ask a question, the person would talk and talk and talk and ask a question and just body language was all always, she was always like this, right? Just leaning in, mm, okay? Like you could look at her and go like, she is legitimately trying to understand and she's curious, right? And the thing is, she didn't even, she didn't know what she was doing well, right? But I started recognizing what she was doing. She'd always take the little extra time to sit down with people and she'd be like, yeah, 
you know, I'm going to call her tomorrow, see how she's feeling. Um, I send an email. So I started seeing like, oh, like the communication aspect. And by the way, some of the things I'm also mentioning is customer service. She was a nine out of 10 on that. Right. But her technical ex expertise was like, let's give it a let's give her a three. But what happened is that these folks would keep coming back for years and they would get results because guess what? They're just consistent. Right. And they would keep coming back. And that was such a huge aha moment for me. Right. Because and for somebody that's like a me head, you know, former pro athlete that geek out, obsessed, obsesses about training, you know, to get to this point to go like, man, like you could actually not have a lot of technical expertise and get great results and people would love you. Now, again, I don't think it's a either or I think it's an and that's an important distinction. But that's where I really started getting into, you know, that side of, um, of the communication side and going like, OK, well, how do you connect those dots? And by the way, back then, I didn't believe in those three. I didn't know and categorize those three C's yet. But it started all making sense, right? Because you start looking at, um, you know, which coach is successful. And by the way, I think one of the greatest things that you can do as a coach, let's say if you're anybody that's listening to this that works out of another gym, okay, or you work for, you know, uh, I don't know, a gym like mine, or you are work training out of your garage, here's what I would highly encourage you to do. Find the person that's got the most clients for the longest period of time and is like the best trainer in their gym. Um, if, if you're not there, hire them, right? If you're working with them, follow them and do everything that they do, right? Me and Kyle Dobbs talked, talked about this on my show. And it was like, he said, well, I found the guy that was crushing it when he was at Equinox. And I realized it's like he was there at five. So I started coming there at five and he stayed till this time. So I stayed till this time. And he said, nine months later, I'm packed, right? But he was like, he did this, so I did this. He did this, so I did that, right? So you want to cheat code? Find the people that are crushing it and just observe what they're doing. You know, and ideally, ask them because they'll share it with you. But my point being is, you know, in, in that scenario, this girl, what I was looking, I was going like, she's doing some things I'm not doing. And I could, I could be like, she doesn't know what I know in training. But she was having a lot of success with something that I wasn't doing as well. And thankfully, it made me aware. And I was just like, oh, man, I need to pick that up. Right. Because I could argue left and right. But at that point in time, she was doing the most sessions with the most people making the most money and getting the really, if you think about it, the best results, because she had this longevity of her clients. Right. So now it's like mirror that like mirror success. I think it's so, so smart and underutilized. And then again, since we're talking about the communication and customer experience, because I, th I think those are such huge gaps for most businesses. And I talk about this in the book, right? Customer experience um, is so bad in America as far as businesses go that this is this, is this uh, really profound study, right? When they asked companies, and it was a big, big study, they asked companies how many, you know, the percentage of people, the uh, companies that believe that they have great customer service. And over 80% of the company said, we believe we have great customer service. Then they went to the customers of those <laughs> said companies. Guess how many said that they believe their company had a great customer service? Probably 30. 8%. No. Right? Talk about like having a dissonance between reality and, and, and what they think, right? Like 10x lower. I mean, imagine that. Imagine that you're sitting there going like, huh, yeah, you know what? Our customer service is pretty damn good. But it's like 10 times lower. That's insane. That's absurd. I mean, that's absurd. So, you know, because one of the things that um, the studies show is this, right? That if that you can make customer service and experience a competitive advantage, right? Where it's like, if all things are equal, and even if they're not, like if I'm, you know, my training is like a five out of 10, another person's like a nine out of 10, but my customer experience is a nine out of 10 and theirs is a four out of 10, customer experience wins. And here's one of the reasons why. If you go to most people that come to my gym, Bigger Ground, or you go to Bigger Box Gym and you said, tell me what a, a, a good and, or a great training program is, will they be able to tell you? No, because th they're not experts, right? They don't have that expertise. Just like 
if somebody showed me, you know, a law document and said, we're going to defend with this document, this person in this case, what do you think? I'd go through it and be like, yeah, I think that's fine. <laughs> right? Like, I don't, I don't know that stuff. So this is the mistake, right? The mistake is that coaches a lot of times are like, <laughs> my program is superior, right? Mm-hmm. And this other person is like, doesn't know as much about training, but they're like, man, I got to make sure this person's treated excellent, that their experience is awesome. They got to feel cared for. They got to feel, feel appreciated. You know, the latter person is going to win in a game of business, right? Because people want to be heard, understood, appreciated, seen. And if you can do that, you know, they don't really understand the training part. Now, by the way, I, I, I believe if you're a coach, you should get great at that stuff. Cause I think if you don't, I think it's unethical, but I'm just giving the reality of, you know, the world of coaching and business. And so if customer service is so bad, I end up going like, how great of an opportunity is it for you to be able to elevate your business through that? Right. And if we go into tactical stuff of customer service, you know, I think even starting with onboarding, right? When you look at onboarding and you go like, okay, from the time that somebody reaches out to you, like what is everything that happens? Actually, let's go even beyond that, right? Before they reach out to you, what happens? You know, and coaches always say, well, what do you mean? I said, well, they had to see something or hear something to reach out. So what happened? So you got to start kind of breaking that stuff down. Now, if it's word of mouth and referral, great, but you should ask, hey, what made you reach out to us? How did you hear about us? Like, I always say that because you never know what they're going to say. Oh, like I go over across the brag to the salon and the, the, the lady of the salon, you know, said that this is a great spot. And I'd be like, oh, awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Guess what? I'm going to go over there, thank mm-hmm. her, give her a gift card and also be like, hey, you know what? Really appreciate that. Would love to give you two weeks of training with me uh, on me. Right. So you create opportunities. But guess what? I want, I want to do more of that, right? That works, so let me do more of that. But my point being is, is that like customer service starts with marketing, right? And people are like, well, what do you mean? Well, what I mean is that when people see your marketing content, right? The value to deliver in the marketplace, they're already judging you and that is already creating their customer experience, right? So imagine that you're like, hey, I'm going to follow Luca. Damn, this guy's like giving valuable advice two to three times a day. Oh. She, he's got a YouTube channel. Jesus Christ, 1,600 videos. Oh, he's got a podcast. Oh, well, right? Let me go to the site. Whoa, blog every week? Jesus, right? So now, but here's what's happening now. They're consuming this and every piece is valuable. Like I'm, I'm, doing, I'm creating something useful and valuable for the reader. So now this is already part of their experience. They haven't reached out yet, right? But at a certain point in time, they're consuming this content and then going, you know what? I need to get in shape. I need to get fitter. I need to get stronger. I'm going to go, who's going to, who are you going to reach out to the person that's already been helping them right through their content and marketing or somebody that they've never heard of. I mean, the answer is easy. So, so this is why, like, I'm such a big fan of, of content and understanding of marketing because you actually go, Hey, like customer experience and service starts the moment you start marketing and doing content. So, you know, look at two gyms in the area. And one has an active blog, an email newsletter that sends out an email once or twice a week, uh, a very engaged social media. So you can go all the time and see what's going on. They do live seminars and workshops at their place. And other gym barely does any of that. I mean, it's like today people shop without coming in and asking you questions. What do they do? Google your website, social media account. And then they start checking it out, right? They're seeing what people are saying. Google reviews. How many do you have? What about this? Oh, is this up to date? They go to the page and it's like, oh, the last video was posted a month and a half ago and it's got 50 views. Like this is just the reality of how people operate. So you have to understand that, right? So it starts there. But then the moment that they reach out, it becomes what happens when they filled out the form. How long did it take for you to get back to them? You know, in the fitness industry, actually in every industry is bad. But in the fitness industry, sometimes it's like, Oh yeah, I got I got back to them like a day later or two days later. Whoa, listen, that in in a real estate industry, if you don't call back within five minutes, every ten minutes afterwards, the percentage of them basically picking up goes down further and further and further. Hmm. Right in physical therapy, we have a in-house physical therapy uh, clinic 
that we partner with and lease out high to physical therapy. If basically, you know, their world is like this, somebody calls them, they don't pick up. They're picking up the, ne- they're calling the next PT, right? Because I got to put my back's hurting. I got to fix it. Okay. I heard some things about you guys, but you know what? I got to go to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. Right? So it's like, if you can respond to people, and again, this is where software can come into play, right? Somebody calls you, leaves a voicemail, but what if they get an automated text back to schedule a calendar, for example, right? And then as soon as somebody can call them back, they call them back. Your conversion dramatically increases and the customer experience goes up because now this person goes like, whoa, they're on top of it, right? I called, yeah, I didn't get them, but instantly I got an email, I got an autoresponder. It's like something happened, right? And again, in our industry, I think sometimes we've become a little bit too complacent because it's one of those things where it's just like, well, you know, I'm really busy, so they'll just have to wait. And in other industries, you'd be done, crushed. I mean, again, example of PT or, or real estate, like these are just the real numbers. So if you can get back to them fast and set up something fast, you're in a better better space. Also, because how many times you know has somebody gone, um, especially with interruption marketing, right? They're on Facebook, they see your video, and you're like, oh, man you know what, this guy's great. I keep watching his stuff. I really do need to get in shape. They fill out the form, right? And then you don't contact them for a day and a half. And they're like pretty motivated. They fill the form out. They're ready to go. Next morning, they wake up. Kids are running all over the place. You know, they were going to go for a workout or a walk. There's another bill on the table. They freak out. They completely forgot about filling out the form. That's already now thing number four, right? So, but if you call them right away, set something up, followed up, all of a sudden, it stays top of mind, and you can get them at this place where we can now get them in through the doors, build some competence and confidence, and help them succeed, right? All these little things like really add up, and it's stuff that can completely, you know, change your business. And then it, you know, it goes down to what was your, we call it a strategy session, right? When a person comes in, or we call it a blueprint transformation, which is like, we're going to outline how we're going to help you achieve results, right? How was that experience? How was the assessment that you took them through? The next day, did you follow up? Hey, I know we talked about you being sore and doing some drills and make sure you hydrate, um, but I'm just calling to see how you're feeling, right? Oh, wow. Boom. Customer experience. It's a little thing that goes a long way. So, you know, I always tell coaches like you should have at least, you know, 30 to 60 days outlined of your onboarding process so that everybody knows what happens. If somebody signs up, they get a gift box, one that you don't tell them about. You know, um, I call it the 70 30 rule. Like, tell people 70% of what they're going to get and don't tell them 30% of what they're going to get. So, 30% is just like, whoa, I get what? A smoothie? Holy shit. Right. So, you're constantly creating this over delivery of expectations. And that can be structured and built in. Like, that shouldn't be, you know, when I, when I started, I was doing those things. Um, in the first years, but it was very much so in my head, right? When you build a team or you have a process and you have another coach or you have an admin or whatever else you have, like this should be a system, right? A system that people can follow. And when you have the system, what happens is that you can see the faults, right? If, if something isn't working well, you can go like, oh, we, let's improve that. Let's change that. Whoa, we're, you know, we're only getting like three out of 10 leads in to sit down with us. So we got to look at our process of, follow up. We got to look at our process of how fast we call this person. You know, are we calling them? Are we texting them? Do we find them on social media and send them a message? Those are all little intricacies that if you build on, it can alter your business, right? Because think about, um, you know, when we go to the numbers game and if you were, you know, for every 10 leads that you got, you know, five came in and you closed three, right? Or maybe you closed two. And now, because you made that process better and you had a referral system as well, now those, you know, 10 leads turn to 12 leads and then seven come in and you close five, right? But over the course of 12 months, I mean, you're talking about 25 more clients. You know, if that's 25 more clients at 300 bucks a month, you're, I mean, that's almost a six figure increase, but it, but it, it wasn't like one massive thing that you did. It was little things in every area that you improved. You know, it's kind of like that. Um, it was like the story of the cycling team, right? Where the coach was like, hey, we're going to improve, you know, um, 
our, our uh, wind resistance by a percent because we're going to improve the helmets a little bit. And then we're going to improve, you know, 3% on the efficiency of our riders, right? So again, that we're, we are in that wind tunnel. And then we're going to improve the cleats a little bit so we can distribute force a little better. And it was like seven or eight things that improved by a percent or two. But then when it comes to, came to the Olympics, they crushed it by like 30%, right? Because it compounds. And you have to look at, you know, your business and your customer experience in that same way where it becomes, hey, like, how can we make these little improvements here and there that actually snowball into much bigger changes when it comes to results of the clients, experience of the clients? And then obviously at the end, you know, what's important, which is the profits of the business, right? So uh, I know that was a handful there, but this is what happens if you get some <laughs> caffeine in me um, and talking about this stuff because I love it. Yeah, I think of the the process, the analogy I've used is that always seems like people want a bigger bucket, but they've got a leaky bucket to start with. Like, yes. I want more leads. I want more people seeking me out. I want more customers. And that's great. Cool. But then when you look at their process, you realize, oh, what's your conversion? Oh, it's like 30%. Okay. Yes. You know, how many people did you follow up on to get in your facility to even talk to them oh it's like 20 percent. it's like you're better off plugging all the holes in your bucket first and then you can worry about doing what else or if it's online you can you know people are like wow i want more traffic it's like okay great well what for what is the end goal of that traffic are you trying to get them to a page you're trying to get them to do something if your conversions are horrible then you're just going to spend a lot of money on traffic. And if you get it, you're not going to see that big increase. It's going to go up a little bit, but you're better off kind of fixing those holes first. And then you can worry about trying to scale and go after more volume. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. It's always simpler. You know, I, I think we're in a world of new right now, right? What I mean by new is that coaches will go, what's the new thing that I can do that will get me a quick results? Yeah. <laughs> and I, we, we literally had a, a mastermind with, with our gym owners this past weekend. And I said, look, first, it's more and better. Okay. And before you ever go to new, and what I mean by that, I'll give you an example. Um, follow up is a, you know, a huge problem, again, with most businesses, you know, in fitness, let's say you get a lead and you follow up, you know, day one, two, three, maybe up to day seven and week two, maybe you're already falling off track. And then after that, you don't even follow up. Right. Whereas follow up should be like week one is every day. Week two is every other day. Week three, it becomes every week. And then after a month, it's every 30 days. But that's a system. And that should be, you know, whether you have a CRM system. But I promise you, the amount of the amount of clients that fall through people's uh, through the cracks of businesses because of lack of follow up is insane. It, it's an, I mean, legitimately, you could be making tens of thousands of dollars more per year if only you had better follow up. Right. So that means that like, what do you have to do? You have to do more follow-up, right? So more first, or when it comes to, for example, you know, this is another one that people go like, well, Luke, I don't understand. Like you're doing this and this and this. I said, okay, cool. Are you, are you emailing every week to your list? Yeah. Well, here and there. I said, okay, <laughs> so, so you're not consistent with even once a week. Let's get you consistent with once a week and then go to twice a week. Right. But now what, what happens? So that's more, and then it might be better. So I'll look at their emails and go like, woo. <laughs> this is too, too long, too big, too clunky. What are we trying to do? You know, I love Ben Settle when it comes to email. So it's like, yeah, Ben's awesome. Two, two, he's, he's great, right? 250 to 400 max words, edutain. So educate and entertain. Don't, you know, most of the time don't pitch, but this is where Dean Jackson's super signature comes in, right? So at the end of every email, you go, you know, the PS is like, whenever you're ready, here's three ways I can help you. Right. And, and that's where you go like, hey, join our 30 day results and advanced program. You know, listen to my podcast for free. Download this, you know, manual that will help you, you know, uh, do a kitchen makeover, for example. So now I just entertained and educated. And then at the bottom, I had a call to action, but it was very soft. It was like, hey, whenever you're ready, right? Hey, if you're not ready right now, don't click anything. Right. But when you are, here's three ways I can help. But now if you were barely emailing, the moment you start emailing one time a week, you now have a call to action and a lead generator once a week. The moment you start emailing twice a week, you've just doubled that. Now you have eight, you know, if there's five weeks, 10 opportunities in that month to generate leads. You didn't do anything new. You just improved, made it better, right? Because you have a, a better framework and 
you just did more of it. And I would say that like 80% of the stuff lives in the more and better space for people, you know, and then if you've squeezed and maximized things, then you go to new. Um, but of course, when you don't have a, if, if you don't have a lot of patience and you want everything fast, then you always go to new. Ooh, 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 ooh I saw this new marketing strategy, <laughs> right? But the truth is that like you really, you know, things compound, you know, everybody understands financial compounding, right? Like, oh, the dollar compounds and I put it in and it's working for me. But listen, so does health, you know, so does assets of content. So, you know, if you wrote blog, you know, before there was social media, I wrote, you know, hundreds of blog posts, whether it was for yeah. other people or for myself. And that stays on your on your website and it becomes SEO and it has caused action, right? Like when you uh, create a piece of content, like even for Instagram, I posted on four different things. Six months later, I can repost it again. Right. It, it, it becomes an asset and it compounds. And the, here's the thing. With the people that watch it, there's a relational equity compounding. So if over the course of a year, somebody's like, hey, I watched 200 of Lucas videos and read 50 emails, wrote, wrote this many, uh, this many, um, uh, I would say read this many blog posts and I listened to 50 podcasts. With all of that, it's created a bunch of relational equity. So when I launch a product or I'm like, hey, I'm opening this thing up that's, that's going to, all that work is going to compound and you're going to have a better result with whatever it is that you're pitching and selling, whatever it may be. So I think it's really, really important. You know, I, I'm a, such a, like look forward and have a target and then reverse engineer my behaviors, uh, type of person and then be patient, you know, and then dedicate yourself to the process and, and kind of detach from the outcome to a degree. Um, and there, there's been a, there's been a quote I've been saying lately that I, I, I love, you know, I've been telling everybody, I said, look, direction is more important than destination, right? Mm, if, I like if, that. Like, if you are going in the right direction, I promise you, you'll get to where you want to go and probably beyond, right? But if you, the thing is that when you just focus on destination and you're always like, I'm not there yet, I'm not there yet. You know, you go to new, what's the new thing that can get me there quick, right? You're constantly detaching from the process. And the process is all that matters because that's where your best work is done. That's where you connect to people. You know, even uh, again, when, on a micro level, to me, the process is, oh, wow, I, I'm coaching these three semi-private clients right now. You know, be where your feet are. And so all I'm caring about is them right there. I connect with them. I'm like, hey, guys, listen, we're going to have a hard session today. I already got smoothies set up for you at the end of the session. All right? Let's earn these smoothies. And I'm connecting. I'm being present. I'm coaching the hell out of them. Like I'm making them laugh. I'm pushing them. I'm challenging them. I'm empowering them. Right. And like at the end of the session, boom, here's, here's the smoothie. Awesome. High fives, follow what the text, show, you know, send them something like, man, just remember like three months ago, you were doing a kettlebell goblet squat with 35s. Today you did 62 and you doubled your reps. So proud of you should be proud of yourself. These are the little things, but those folks are going and telling their, fr they're going home and going like, Oh my God, I love my gym. I got, it's so awesome. And they're like, what do you mean? It's like, oh, my coach is so empowering and enthusiastic and did it. Oh, but you know what? I really, I really need a coach too. Come with me next week, right? That's the process, right? But if you're there already, you know, you're in a session and your mind is somewhere else. Oh my God, like my revenue, my business is not doing enough. I need more clients. Like you're not where your feet are and you can't be in the process, right? Just as, as if you're like, I want to run this quick ad and it'll give me a hundred leads. I'm like, okay, have you created a bunch of content for the marketplace? Like to retarget, <laughs> to have engagement, to have, well, no. I'm like, man, like you got to do that. Like, you know, Berardi always says, you know, do great work and then tell everybody about it or ideally uh, have other people <laughs> talk yeah. about it, right? Yeah. And, and so that's like this, um, it always comes back to distilling and realizing that it's a bunch of simple steps done exceptionally well and consistently. And then once you do them consistently, then you pick up the frequency. And, and, and it's, it's usually not like, it's usually not this thing where it's like, there's, there's this magical thing, you know, that these guys that are killing it, know, and they're not telling us. <laughs> it's like, no, it's, it's not that, right? It's like, you have a hard time being disciplined and consistent and focusing on the work in front of you and having a path and a plan, right? In, in nutrition, my, my, my number one habit in nutrition for, for people to be successful is Plan, prepare, cook, right? It's got nothing to do with macros, got nothing to do with calories and how much protein. It's like, if you, if you can make sure that you plan, prepare and cook, and if you can't cook, planning is like 
Hey, I'm going to have a meal delivery service for lunch because yeah. I struggle with lunch. Um, you know, I'm going to go to this cafe instead of eating the cafeteria because they have shitty food and they don't match my goals. Like you just know what you're going to do the next day and you have a plan for it, right? Because no path and plan equals default and default is struggle because it's where you are right now and you don't like where you are, right? So you can't just get up tomorrow morning and go like, well, today I'm going to do better. What's your plan for that? Well, I don't have it, but I'm going to, you know, with willpower, I'm just going to do better. And it's like, <laughs> let's try harder, it. bro. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, just try harder. That's it. And it, it doesn't work that way, but business is the same. Again, you know, when we started, I said principles, right? And, you know, there's underlyingly, there's principles of behaviors that underlie our training, that underlie our nutrition habits, that underlie our sleep, you know, stress management. And, and they do the, the same thing with sales, marketing, content, you know, all these different things. So what I'm, you know, what I'm a big, I would say, fan of, or what I would like to kind of, you know, consider myself an alchemist for others in, in that area is like breaking it down and going like, look, we've found the daily, weekly, and monthly things that you have to do to get you, or, or should I say, forget about, you know, yes, you got a destination, but to, to move you in the right direction, right? And so now you know, and of course, it doesn't mean that you're going to be 100% on, you know, on path, because unfortunately, you know, if that was the case, and you just rolled out a plan, and everybody did it, everybody be rich and in the best shape of their lives and all that good stuff. But, but at least here you have direction. And if you can have accountability and if you can have a community that ends up, you know, um, kind of being your, your uh, tribe that, that you adhere to their standards, which I think is really important. Um, I'm kind of tapping into the culture part here a little bit. Uh, and, and again, you know, in a business realm, why do people do really good when they go into a mastermind or coaching? is because everybody there is pushing to achieve uh, an improvement in their business, right? So that becomes the standard of the tribe. Hey, the standard of the tribe is that every day we improve our customer experience, but then every day we're going to market and then we're going to improve our systems, right? So, so now you're in that group. You're like, oh, I'm going to do that too. Just like if you come to, you know, Vigor Ground, the gym, you're like, I mean, people from all like all ages, shapes, sizes, ethnicities, cultures, you name it. But there's a common goal. Everybody wants to get healthier, fitter, look better, right? Get stronger, improve their performance. And so there is a, a standard of the tribe, right? And there is a culture. This is how we do things here. So I think that, you know, again, I think environment is one of the fastest ways to change behaviors. And so, you know, insert yourself into an environment where you know, what you want to achieve is actually the norm of the tribe, right? It, and so I think that's so powerful, you know, um, because to me, culture is, is, you know, when you say like how we do things here, it's almost like a, a compass of values, right? It, and by the way, like everybody writes out values, it's become the, the cool thing to do. Like, here's our values, mm -hmm. right? And, um, but I'm like, man, like, what, what if, you know, what if you had somebody that's never been in your business or your training or your gym or anything else? walked in and they're just there for a week and they're just writing out like basically forget about quotes on the walls and that like they would go here's what i think you your values are based on what i see right based on the the how people operate you know the coaches the owner even the clients and it have stuff to say that's your values right not that because it's like you can write whatever the hell you want down and it sounds cool Right. But it's more so like, what do people see and how do you show up? And so if, you know, and this is, this is one of the exercises in the book too, where it's just like, all right, like create your values. Now let's operationalize them. Right. So one of ours is leave it better than you found it. It was one of the summit sayings as well. Right. And so I explained this and said, there's a micro and a macro level to that value. The micro level is like when a person comes in for a training session, we have to leave them better than we found them. Did they leave in a better mood? I even have a question. This is part of, you know, you can see how these things gel together, but like coaching and culture. I say, hey, listen, how would you want to, like when you leave here today, how do you want to feel? I'll ask my client that, right? And a lot of times they'll be like, I don't know. <laughs> so, man, how, are you, how are you feeling right now? It's like, how do you want to feel? Be like, man, I'm exhausted right now. I want to feel energized. Okay. You know, let's say we had, 
a full body training session with, you know, four sets of, of three heavy trap bar deadlifts. And, you know, I don't know what I'm like, I might change that up a little bit. Right. I'm like, you know what, we're going to keep the intensity high, get the volume lower. Let's stimulate, not annihilate. You know, at the end, we might do a mobility like circuit with some breathing and they're leaving and like, man, I feel great. Okay. So I did like, I gave them the feeling that they wanted. Okay. So my point being is that connects to leave them better than you found them. Right. It might be a thing where somebody's having a bad day, you know, some shit happened in life that's uncontrollable. But at the end, you just go and behind the counter, you grab a $25 Nike gift card and you go, hey, listen, I love you like Nike, like I do. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Boom. You give them the gift card You go get, you know, like I love these new new shirts that they got these right fits. Get one of them. Right. And they're like, what the man for that moment, like that made their day. You made their day. Right. You left them better than you found them. Okay. On a macro level, you know, I talked to this team, to, to our team the whole time. Like we've become kind of famous for this in the industry is that, you know, we've now ran 750 plus charity events. Like we used to do it every Saturday pre COVID. We still do them. We just had an event, you know, uh, now it's a month and a half ago for um, uh, Happy Bundles, which is basically they, they donate and give either clothes, toys, uh, financials to families with kids with cancer. Uh, an amazing organization. And one of the, uh, I would say, uh, the fans of the Seawolves came in and, you know, we were, we already raised over three grand and this guy came in and wrote a $20,000 check. So we you know, oh, wow. raised $23,000. And I mean, over the course of like the last 15 years, we've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars, tons of food, tons of clothes, ton, like for hundreds of different organizations. Now, to, that's leaving it better than you found it. But on a more macro scale, as far as like our community, right, Renton. Now, on a macro, macro scale, my mission is to leave the industry better than I found it, right? Which is, that's why I'm like creating so much content, giving them out for free, writing the book, and then another book after that. You know, I speak at more events than I probably should as far as like how, how my <laughs> schedule is already insane. But it's, it is, it's a driving force and a value, but it's operationalized, right? So I can sit down with my team or with people and go, here's this value. How does this look like in real life? And I can ask to other coaches, Tell me how this, give me an example of a micro or macro of leaving it better than you found it, right? And they'll be able to say what that means to them, right? That's an operationalized value. Or for us, you know, another one that's big is like 1% better every day. You know, we're the education part of it, you know, I, and this is not, not opinionated. I don't want to sound arrogant and Sarah, but like we do more continuing education in any gym in this country. You know, this year we'll have 11 certifications or seminars. We've been nice. averaging anywhere from nine to 11 for the last eight years. Um, you know, on top of the summits, we've now had like 160, you know, of the world's top people, you know, from nutrition to training to this, that you name it, that have come through and did either a seminar certification or in staff, you know, and we already got seven booked for next year and it is not even the end of the year. Right. So again, that's operationalized. You know, it, it's not a thing that I can, that I just say it. And then it's like, Oh, well, where, you know, are you guys, do you read, do you take courses? Do you, yes, actually, Hey, we have reading material. We give courses to coaches. I fly out all the time to learn, but then this is how many events come here. And, and so that it's an important thing because it sounds very woo woo, you know, and, and trust me, like I, you know, in the beginning of the, <laughs> when I was in the industry, the same thing It's like, you know, people talk about values and stuff like that. And you're like, uh, and you don't really, you know, you're younger and you don't know. And then I, you know, I started, you know, I, I was obsessive about reading, um, biographies of people that I looked up to Richard mm -hmm. Branson, the world and Tony shy, you know, RIP Zappos and on and on and on it goes. And everywhere you'd see this theme, you know, values of the company. Here's how I developed them here. I, here's how I came to that point, you know, and I started being more and more like, man, like, okay. And then you kind of start creating values that you think are like, I think this is cool. Right. And again, you evolve and you, and you learn, but I actually now am much more, uh, I would say coach much more on that side and go like, look, let's just figure out three to five. Like this will change. This will develop. But the thing is, is that like, you have to be able to say, you know, when people come in and say, how do we do things around here? You can't say a thing and then it doesn't show up. It actually makes it even worse. Right. Because you, I don't know, you got a model on the wall. Right. And then like, everybody's like, this doesn't fucking happen here. You know, like <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, make, it makes it worse. Just like we talked about, you know, if you don't have great coaching, customer experience and culture, 
but you're like, I figured out an ad and a campaign and a challenge that's going to really get a lot of people through the doors. You know, and what you end up doing is those people come and they go and they go like, yeah, that wasn't that good, you know, or they might be like, man, that sucked. And now they tell others. And I think the statistic is that, you know, a person that's had a bad experience will tell seven to eight times more people than a person that's had a good experience, right? So essentially, if you don't get that thing in check, what happens is that you now have created marketing with a megaphone that your place sucks, right? And you, you, you know, you talk about a demise. So um, one number, you know, because again, I think I, I said this earlier and, and you have to be able to, to create um, an assessment, right? Assessment precedes awareness, awareness precedes change. And, you know, my thing is like, check your attrition, right? So if you're, you know, I, ideally your attrition would be about 3%. That's pretty damn good. Five is still acceptable. Um, you know, it's, it's not horrible. But if you're more than 5% attrition, like, you know, mm-hmm. the, like red, like alarm, right? Why I would say coaching, customer experience, culture, like 80% of your effort should be there. Because if you do all this other stuff and your attrition is high, it's just saying that you don't have a good product or service, right? And Hormozzi says it's not, I agree with it, right? Like if you can create an exceptional service and product, the marketing is so much more powerful because the people that come in end up referring more people, doing word of mouth. There's all these intangibles that actually just compounds the marketing, But, you know, like he says, if you don't have a good product or service, you're going to spend the rest of your life marketing like crazy, right? To basically get by and be okay, maybe, maybe, right? Because people will keep coming and going and saying, this is not that good. So I I see this a lot, right? Where it's, you know, you're not looking at the quality of things. And the thing is, you got to keep improving all the time, you know, going back to that 1% better, you know, the mentality. I've been in business for, you know, 17 years and like, this last year, I've had a realization. I'm like, man, like, you know, we're exceptional at this thing and we're very good at this thing. We're okay here, but man, we, we're not even, we're not good here. Like, we got to make this better, you know? And it's like new levels, new devils, right? The moment that you become like, ha ha, mm-hmm. you know, this is it. It's like the Jim Collins book, right? Good to great. Like when do, when do companies start um, falling apart? It's like at their peak because they start thinking that, you know, they're holier than thou and nothing can go wrong and they're the shit and all that. Right. And so you, it is that that's part of the process is like, how do we continue to get better? How do we keep improving? And again, that, I think that's a, a, a nice marker to have is to look at your attrition, by the way, mo- most gym owners or coaches that I ask, what's your attrition? No idea. Yeah. <laughs> Which by, you know, it's simple. Like if you have a hundred clients and you know, five of them leave every month, that's 5% attrition. Right. Three of them leave every month. That's three percent attrition. Um, you know, if if you have five clients and then one of them leaves, well, that's twenty percent attrition, right? Again, so, and when you're starting off, maybe that's a little bit more aggressive. But listen, the you should that's what you should work on. That's what you should shoot for that three, you know. And until you don't get there or to five, you should continue to improve your your product and service. And um, you know, I, I'll, I'll say another thing about the the numbers part of it. Um, you know, KPIs, key performance indicators, I think they're in everything that you do, they're there, right? If I got, you know, I'm training my elite NFL guys or Cy Young Award, you know, Major League Baseball guys, what are we doing, right? We're, we're looking at throwing speed. We're looking at, you know, we're measuring gun on for mobility on, on shoulders. Uh, we're looking at, depending on what the, you know, VBT monitors for like, hey, your, you know, your strength speed is, is long. We got to improve that. You know, you're, you know, you're a tackle. Um, and this is kind of like your weakness. All right, cool. Like we have KPIs to see, this is where you are. This is where you want to go in, in, you know, in training and coaching, it's like, okay, the KPIs that are baseline, by the way, is leads generated appointment set up, you know, so that's strategy sessions, clients converted. And then it's, you know, whether they were to a trial or to a membership, we, we uh, see that. And then we look at, upgrades downgrades and pauses and then we essentially look at like revenue that's like super baseline right uh and plus my by the way plus minus net which is a really big one right so five net new clients means that if you lost four it means you have to get nine right because i want to have five net plus per month and so having those kpis are crucial because those kpis will tell you you know where there's a problem 
So if I'm generating a lot of leads, but I'm not sending a bunch of appointments, then that means that we need to improve that. Um, basically, we need to improve our follow-up, right? If we get a good amount of appointments, but we don't convert to memberships, then that means we need to work on sales, right? So again, we have to have something that creates, it's the assessment that precedes awareness that precedes change. Yeah, that was awesome. And then could you list the KPIs again one more time real quick? Oh, I think my internet froze here. Hold up. Uh, let me see if it's my one. Mm, give me one second. I think it might have been your one that froze. Yeah, I think so. Um, my video is kind of froze, but let me turn the video off for just a second, see if that fixes it. But I got the first two, and then you had, I think you had four KPIs, correct? And then you had the details after that. Cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go over them again. So the 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 main KPIs is, you know, leads generated. And by the way, when you do leads generated, I think it's very important to like always like write out where they're coming from, right? Because that constantly gives you insight on, you know, again, the 2080 rule for me is like, you know, what's the 20% of leads that generates 80% of business? Because whatever I find out, like I might want to do more of that. So leads generated, then it's appointment set. First, first, that's a strategy session, you know, so actual in-person sit downs. If you have an online business, that means that, you know, how many calls you'd get on um, to be able to sell somebody. From there, you have conversions, you know, people that converted their trial or a member, right, that paid. And then from there, you'd have upgrades, downgrades, uh, freezes, which is all like normal stuff. Um, and then net, net clients. So you have a plus minus net, right? So if you, if you lost four clients, but signed up 10, you're net six. I think that number is a really, really important number. Um, because you can literally look ahead and say, Hey, if we sign up four net new clients per month, that's 48 this year, that's going to increase our membership 48, you know, at an average of, for instance, 300 bucks a month. You can go like, wow, that's $180,000 extra per year, right? That, I mean, right? Again, it, it comes back down. Now I can say, now I can say, what are the things that I need to do daily, weekly, and monthly to, you know, improve these things? But, but the thing is, the, the, the KPIs give you an insight on what's working and not working. Again, right? Like we, I mentioned it earlier, but if I'm generating 20 leads, but only five of them are set up for a strategy session, boof. That's 25%. That's low. Like we should be shooting for 50%, right? And, you know, if, if only XYZ of those convert and it's like conversions less than six out of 10, we got to work on that. We got to work on sales. Like how was that strategy session looking like? What are we doing? Did we, you know, uh, did we handle objections before they even came? Do our coaches know how to handle objections or to pay the person that's the salesperson, right? Those are all like really, really, uh, again, it's, it's kind of like if somebody tells you, uh, how's your nutrition? That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Everybody okay. says pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's always pretty good, right? Like, right, but but then you go like, all right, well, let's write everything down, right? And be, and the thing is that even before a coach actually pinpoints things out, if they write everything down as a, they end up going usually like, ooh, damn, I didn't know that these snacks were 700 calories every time I ate them, mm-hmm. right? Boom. Assessment preceded awareness, and awareness is what needs precedes change, right? Because when you look at that, that essentially the behavior change chart of, you know, you have un- unconscious incompetence. Yeah. Right? Muscles, you, you, yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you need that assessment to, to go like, oh, shit. And then you have basically, you know, uh, conscious incompetence because you're clear, you're aware of it. Now you can work on it and you can create a path and a plan that takes you to, you know, conscious competence. It's like, hey, you got to work really hard on it until you develop these habits. And then eventually, hopefully you get to you know, unconscious competence. And you're just like on a daily, that's what you do. But, but there has to be something that makes you aware. And like, I'm baffled by, and by the way, I I don't want to judge because it's like, I've been through every phase of this in my life. I've made all the mistakes, but you know, it, where, where I'll sit down with the owner and like ask them a lot of questions or a coach and just ask them questions. And like, they don't know, but what, what that means is like, they don't have awareness of what's working and not working. And just getting that awareness could give them a direction 
right? Because it's like, here's why things are sucking. But you know what? This is good because now we know. Like, and there is a path and a plan to fix this, whether it's improving your service, your retention, your follow-up. Hey, you, you actually need more marketing poles in the water. You have none. You're just kind of, I mean, you're throwing shit up against the wall and you don't even know, <laughs> you know, and hoping things stick, but you're not, you know, you have no plan. And, and the thing is that can be, uh, feel hurtful and be like, oh my God. But I'm like, but now we have a starting point. Before we were in the fog. Now we're clear. Now it's not good, but we're clear. And we know where we want to go, right? And again, like we kind of, you know, I would say barely scratched the surface of uh, the three C's, right? Because I mean, like the book is currently at 450 pages. So it's, you know, <laughs> Sean Hyacin was like, dude, I have to, like, I can't even, you know, you, you're, you know too much about this shit. And then it becomes like hard editing and we going back and forth because my whole, my whole goal was like, this book will be like actionable. It's not like a, it's like, you could open up a chapter and go like, I'm going to f- implement these things in this chapter and it's going to make your coaching and business better and grow tactically. You know, it's like principles and boom, here's tactics, do this thing. Right. And, but you know, if we went to the other threes, the content, the communication, and we touched on it a little bit for sure. And the sales part, it would be the same thing. You like, I can assess it. You know, like we just did a call with one person who's like, man, like, you know, we really want to improve uh, our, not only like our engagement, because like we want to improve our advertising. We want to improve our positioning in our area, like our local area. And we want to kind of make a plan with the content. You know, I said, what are you currently doing with the content? And it, w- it was basically, you know, we just were like, let's go over each thing, you know, from emails to blogs to like every platform, every medium. And when we just put it all there, they were like, oh shit, we don't do anything really. I mean, we do so little. <laughs> so this thing that we want to grow, we haven't really been doing anything. Right. So it just became about, well, let's fit. What do you feel the most comfortable doing? You know, and like one of the guys is like, I, you know, he likes to write. One of the guys is like more confident in video. Cool. Here's what you're doing with writing. Here's what you're doing with video. You got this many coaches, get a commitment, you know, do a bonus if they're doing two videos per week, you know, every week. Okay. Now you got four coaches. That's another eight pieces of content every week. Here's how you distribute it. Here's how you turn it into ads. Right. But the, 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 the kicker was it started with, an assessment that created awareness and in a path and a plan. And I don't care if it's training, if it's nutrition, if it's sleep, if it's, you know, deep health and you do labs, like if it's business, if it's marketing, it's always the same thing, right? Like you're, you're going to have to first get clear on what is your point A on the GPS, right? What, like, where are you even starting? People, a lot of times are like, I want to figure out where I want to go. And I'm like, but first let's figure out where you're even starting. You don't know where you are, you know, in a map. Cool. Now we know where you're at. Oh, it's a shitty place. But you know what? We know where you're at. Mm-hmm. You know, here's point B. Here's where you want to go. Put it into the GPS. And now it's like, okay, it's going to show you a path and a plan. And, and just like any GPS, you know, you, you move along and then there's a roadblock and you got to reroute and the whole shebang. But guess what? Nonetheless, the moment you have a point A and a point B and you have guidance and accountability in the community, like you get there faster and you get there better. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And the nice part too, is I always look at what are things that are also very scalable. And the nice part about content, especially now is that it's pretty scalable. Like you put a post on say Instagram or you put a post on YouTube or obviously I'm biased because I like a lot of newsletter stuff. You're only doing that content piece once, but you could have, unlimited traffic you could have a huge newsletter list you could have a small list and it's again back to the process of executing that thing but you know that if you get more viewers you get more people on your newsletter you're still really doing the same thing so i think sometimes people think that when i'm doing this oh my god like i'm like you know a year from now i'm gonna have to create 10 times the amount of content it's like not really like again you might be able to create more which is great but the people you're interacting with can be an exponential thing. That doesn't mean the work that you're putting in has to be exponential. It's usually almost the exact same thing that you're doing. Actually, I think too, is like, as you get better, I mean, I, I think that a good reason to make more money is that, so you can take some of that money and invest it into people that do things better than you and faster than you. Oh, right? sure. So, I mean, and now you have AI and I, if you don't mind, I'm going to share some tactical stuff. Yeah, please. I, I love, you know, I getting on shows, I love to talk about philosophy and principles and stuff like that, but I like for people, you know, hopefully in this episode, 
they hear like a, a whole bunch of stuff that's like, oh, I can go do this right now, right? I think that's an important factor. So, you know, you take, um, this is just one example. Opus AI is a, is a te basically technology. Literally, you drop in your, any YouTube link video. And I got a ton of podcast videos. I got a ton of long form vlog videos, you know? And so I just drop that in and it's like 30 minutes and it'll chop up 10 different reels with subtitles with emojis on them by itself really and it huh. picks it up and the thing is and it picks it based on headlines so and let me tell you ah. this it does a pretty like i would say three to four of them i can use hmm. but it's 200 bucks for the year and allows you to do 60 hours or something like that like up some absurd amount basically I, I broke it down it's like it's a dollar or 50 cents to make that real for me right yeah but but the thing is i can literally put in two of those video links and go do something else yeah <laughs> come back and i got 20 reels right so that's one example, right, of, of technology or, yes, I'm paying somebody to now that, you know, I, I batch shoot a whole, uh, you know, in a batch, I shoot a whole lot of videos and then make the, they make them really nice and engaging with the emojis, with the pictures, yeah. and the videos and all that stuff. And, you know, and again, that will be distributed on multiple, multiple platforms. But then, you know, another thing that is really valuable is like the moment that I see a video that does better, right? So meaning that's really easy to see. So let's say I put up a reel and most reels get you know, 15 to 20,000 views or something like that. But this one organically is already at 35,000. So what is it telling me? Well, it's telling me that people are liking this already organically. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to put some money behind it. Yeah. Because I already know people love it, right? And I'm going to go already know it's working, right? It's already You've got working. the proof in front of you. Correct. So now it's like, I don't, I'm not guessing. I know it from the data. And then I'm just putting fuel to the fire and put some more money behind it. So now, you know, over whatever course of weeks at 100, 200,000, and that's, I mean, also social proof, but now I can take that content and turn it into an ad, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. this is what's working really well. Actually, I talked to, to Gary Vee years ago about this and started doing this. He's like, Luca, just turn your great content into advertising, right? So I shoot a reel of my small group that, you know, it's literally real time. Like you see people training. It's not fake. It's not, you know, super edited or whatever. And it does well. Okay, now I promote it. And what, I, what I'll do is I'll actually promote it to emerging markets. So on Facebook, mm. I'll do Mexico, Saudi Arabia, India, you know. Uh, I remember you're, you're talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's like you're getting, you know, like right now, if I, I showed you a stat, it'll it blow your mind. Like I, I, I had some uh, Facebook account managers that were like, I don't believe this. They had to go into my thing <laughs> um, because for $35, it was like, you know, 200,000 views. And it was basically 0. 0.000. 03 cents per view. If, if you look at the my app on on Facebook, it showed zero. It looks it was basically free, but it, it was super cheap. Right. So now I spent barely any money. Now I'm gonna take that once that uh, once that uh, and it's only gonna be views. So I'm not gonna have any learn more, sign up, anything, right? But now I got like a half a thousand, you know, half a million or a million views on it, or three quarter million views on it, a thousand shares, hundred comments. Then I take it back locally, and now I run it locally and send it to a landing page, you know, or make yeah. it a Facebook lead ad. Right. And get, the thing is you're getting five times cheaper leads because people are going like, Whoa, this is a local gym. We're like, Holy shit. Look at this engagement. Like it, it must be good. Right. So again, it's, it's like a psychology and talk about scalability because like I can put some money behind it. I can target and then go to sleep and it's doing its job. Right. So, so it comes back down, but what does it come back down to? Right. That I'm trying to focus on making really, really good stuff. Because if I make really good stuff, a lot of the other things will be so much easier, right? Because imagine how much ads, you know, uh, you'd have to run to make a shitty thing be seen a lot, right? It's just, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so much, you know, so much more and people still won't care for it. So it's like, that's a little bit of the magic trick there, right? And it's, and, and that's tactical. Um, and now we do, by the way, you know, like, um, for example, you know, we got prompts inside of our uh, our business mastermind. Like we just did this thing where... We have prompts for AI that will write copy. And it's basically like, take your, you know, let's say it's busy moms. And it's like, hey, you know, busy moms for this area. Can you find all the obstacles, the, the, the pain, the problems, the struggles of, you know, a 30 to 45 year old busy mom in this area and write it as if it was Eugene Schwartz, the famous copywriter mm -hmm. that was writing it. Right. And, and then it starts writing and then you give it, you know, four more different prompts. And like these, these ads are coming out like, holy shit, you know, like, and by the way, I'm, I've spent a, lo a lot of my life doing copywriting, but that's so much more helpful because 
I mean, in minutes, you know, it's writing up some really good stuff and I tweak it a little bit, edit it and bam, we're putting it up as an ad. And it's like, you know, 4X outperforming some other stuff that, you know, was written off the top of my dome or it was written off of somebody else that's a good copywriter. And again, I'm sharing these things because it's like, how do we use technology, you know, to help us? Again, it won't replace you. It will help you, right? It will just help you out. I, I look at it as an assistant. Hold on, I'm just uh, finding this uh, to plug in because my computer is on on its last. Uh, oh yeah. Last juice, and I don't want I don't want it uh, want it to kick us out. Hold on, one second. Yeah, and I'll just add to that that I've played around a fair amount with AI, and what I found so far, and again, this I'm sure will change is initially for writing what it spits out. I found is pretty horrible but if you can give it something to revise or changes in phrases or listing or iterations or edits or just a way of creating different ideas and viewing it differently so like you said revise as like gene schwartz i'll sometimes do that with stuff i write i'll just pick some other random voice I'll say, okay, revise this in a certain voice. I'll leave it sit for a day. I'll come back to it the next day. I may not even like the voice that it was written in, even though I wrote it originally. But some of the phrases that it puts in, you're like, oh, that's good. Or that'll mm -hmm. give you an idea of how to change that phrase to a better phrase. So I found it's this really cool kind of stepping stone that it's not the final product per se, but it it, it gives me ideas that I wouldn't have had otherwise, which I find is like super valuable. It's, it's exactly that it's almost and this is the this is myself or when people started saying like ah oh, you don't even have to be a good writer anymore i'm like no <laughs> uh, you know being like it's one of the four like in my presentation i always talk about like writing is one of the four skills that will never go out yeah. um and but it's almost like you know ai can do research for you right like what i what what i ended up doing is i just fed it my writing you know my yeah. emails my blog posts my like and then, you know, the other part where it's valuable is for SEO articles that I don't actually want anybody to read. Right. So sure. Yep. We'll do SEO articles that have, you know, certain keywords for the website, for the local area that are hidden. I'm not going to drive traffic, yeah, to yeah. It, but like, you know, what I started doing now, and again, you know, to be tactical here um, is, you know, I've, I've wrote for a lot of big publications from T nation to bodybuilding.com to men's health and stuff like that, which, you know, I was, I'll still like, I think it's good for positioning. Um, yep. But, you know, th then I started going like, wh why, like, why am I not going back to writing the best stuff for my own website? Yeah. You know, and, and not only did I do that, I went to a lot of which I'm going to reach out to you, too, by the way. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. Andrew Coach, Sean Hyacin, uh, yep. you know, we, we co-write articles, um, Lee Boys. You know, I got a bunch of people that are going to write for for Vigor and I'll pay them. You know, I'm like, it's not like uh, I mean, folks will be like, hey, I'll do it for free. I'm like, no, nah, man, I'll pay you like and the the kicker is now now we're getting like great articles on my website that are educating but we're driving traffic there so i'm going to spend money but i'm going to drive traffic to my site then i can retarget for specific things right but again i'm not you know i want like quality writers that do stuff in the real world writing and not go like oh, i'm just going to write ari articles because you know if 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 the ai <laughs> just wrote it you read it and you're like dude there's no um um there's there's no soul no, you, it's you know very who said this? Killer Mike. Uber technical. I, I said, oh, yeah, I love it, that dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I love him. He had an interview with Joe Rogan, and it was like, yeah, it was a great he interview. said something. He said, We beat AI. I and mean, Joe Rogan was, Rogan was like, What do you mean? It's like, Well, there's this algorithm, the AI calculates this, that, the other, and it couldn't figure it out. But it, he said, Here's the thing, man. It's an intangible, but like with music, right? Or maybe even with writing, like when somebody wrote it with their heart and soul, I don't give, like, you can feel that. I don't give a yeah. shit what anybody says, man. Like, I'll read it and like, dude, like this person was writing that from here. You know what I mean? I think music's the same way. Um, and I, I think that like that will never go away. So it becomes, you know, uh, I think people will make it like a bit of a crutch. And I, I tend and I tend to be like, let it help you. Let it be your assistant. You know, let it cut out the work that maybe is, is, is kind of like tedious, but like the craft is the craft. Right. And it's like, Man, great writers are gonna. I actually think. I actually think that great writers are gonna. Um, and this is gonna be a compounding effect, because people mm -hmm. that don't know how to write great, you're gonna have this crutch and try to do it this way. And it's like the great writers are gonna have some help, and it's just gonna be significantly better, right? And again, you can't get away from the damn work and getting good at the fucking thing that you do. You know, it's just yeah. The the moment that you start, you know, we we said it earlier, like right? it's like the moment that you want to do that new thing that's gonna solve everything, and it's like. 
dude, the craft is the craft. And it's like the amount of hours that I put into specific areas of the coaching craft. It's, I can't even, comp- I can't, I've stopped counting. You know, I, I don't know. And I don't care because I'm just like, how do I continue to get better? And I looked at, I look at everything as a practice. I think this is the most valuable thing. I got a new coach right now, actually two, two that I'm onboarding. Um, they're, they've been here, like actually working for a month, but before that they got onboarded and, you know, they were struggling with some stuff. And I said, look, I said, Blake, you have to look at this as practice. You know, I'm going to go back to basketball and it's like, listen, man, like whatever it is that you're not good at, like you, you wouldn't expect, like if I gave you, you know, it's like, Hey, you don't play ball. If I was like, dude, go pull it, do two dribbles, left pull up jumper. You know what I mean? Like, and out of 20, how many are you going to hit? Dude, it might be like three. You're going to suck. You won't <laughs> be surprised that you suck because you're like, this is not my natural thing. Um, I don't practice it. But would it say like if you went for 30 minutes a day, five days a week for the next 60 days, you know, you're going to be making five to six out of those shots. You're going to feel way more confident because you practiced it. I'm like, the thing that you're right now that you're stressing about, you need to just break it back down and go like, I have not practiced it. So I have not earned it. I've not earned this. And that's okay. Right. And take again, writing articles, take, you know, putting up an ad, take the customer experience part of it that we said, you know, and the shortcut is learning from the people that have been there, done that are still doing it now. Cause you'll cut through the bullshit, but you're still going to have to do the reps. Oh yeah. You're still going to have to do the practice that you can't. So the thing is what the people that want to get away from that is like, I can cut your, you know, if you come here, I can coach you up faster than, I mean, I believe almost anywhere else, but, but, but I still can't get you to not do the work, right? You're going to have to do the damn reps and the more reps that you get, the better you're going to be. So, you know, and, and that's just like, if you want to be in business, if you want to be great, in, in the fitness industry and you want to coach in person or on, online, whatever it is that you want to do, like you practice, build skill sets, build skill sets, build identity and build your future and build your life. And so, you know, you just, whatever it is that you want, you haven't practiced it enough, man. That's really the answer to it. Um, and, you know, if we kind of zoom out and go back to, because we're talking about the book, that's really what the book is, is, is it becomes like these six C's, right? The seven C is consistency, which is Keep doing this shit over and over and create a system for it, right? But you're going to have to do it. Unfortunately, the book is not like, you know, read this chapter, fucking do one thing and you're going to, you know, your business will blow up. You'll be a millionaire. <laughs> it's not that. Uh, there, there's no such thing. But, I, you know, I do feel like it, it makes it a lot, a lot less stressful when you can break things down and go like, here's what I need to practice every day. And, you know, over time, like you will really, you'll build up your confidence, you'll build up your skill set, your results will get better, your, your client's results will get better, your business will grow. And, you know, you got to keep going back to the process that leads you in the right direction. Yeah. It's like you said, as we wrap up, like knowing what direction you're going in, ensuring you're doing higher quality before quantity. And then it's just the violent consistency of whatever it is, just doing that day in and day out. And like you said, there is shortcuts, but the shortcut is what things to do are going to get you there faster. It's not skipping the things to do <laughs> no exactly and, and i think i think that a lot of people are doing the right things by the way i just think that they're drastically underdoing them and it's yeah. the thing that in this world you know people are sometimes even like you know uh it's blasphemy for me to say something like this right because you know you need uh, four hour work weeks i mean four four day eight hour work weeks and this that and the other like I, look i keep going back to this by the way i will raise my hand here and say like i am speaking to people that want to be exceptional at what they do Right. I'm not speaking to people that are like, I want to be mediocre at the thing. Mm-hmm. I like, I can't help you I, for real. Like, I can't help you because I'm going to speak in a way that talks about the things that you need to be to do to be exceptional at your thing. Right. And, and build an exceptional business. Not like, I mean, I, I guess if you kept, you know, going down the path and at a certain point in time, you're like, I'm fine. Cool. Do that. But my, you know, if, if you went to Kobe Bryant, like, you know, today, a lot of stuff is happening. That's almost like people going up to Kobe and saying, Kobe, Kobe, you, you train too much. You, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, it's too much Kobe. It's like, no, he wants to be the greatest of all ever. You know what I mean? Like that, those, that's what it takes. So there's a price to pay. You got to figure out uh, this the other thing. I think it's important. I'll, I'll finish on this and I'll promise, but I, this is important. Yeah. Um, is that there is a requirement for the thing that you want, right? There's always a requirement. And I think it's important to get clear on what that is. For example, if you're like, you know, I deadlift 120, but I want to deadlift 500. 
but I can only go train once a week. I said, mm. look, you're, <laughs> I, I, that's not what's required. It's going to take more than that, quite a bit more than that, right? Or, uh, you know, I want to build up my social media account, but I'm posting once a week. It's going to take a lot more than that. You know, I want to be uh, very as lean and healthy as I can possibly be. But, you know, I drink three nights a week and I go and um, eat processed food 50% of the time and kind of don't look at what I'm eating. I mean, right. We could go down the list of all yeah. these different things. It's, it's like, hey, I want to scale my business, but I never track KPIs. Like there's a requirement to anything that you want to achieve. And it's like find the people that have achieved it and they'll tell you the requirements. To, and what I hear a lot sometimes like, man, Luca, I want this right here but your behaviors are here. And I'm like, this is what's required. Your behaviors need to take up a significant notch. Like you need to work more. You need to be more focused on this. You need to do this. You need to invest in that. And if, if it's, if the answer is like, well, I don't, I don't really want to do that. It's like, that's okay. I'm not going to judge you for it. Yeah, totally. But guess what? The thing that you said you want, you ain't getting that. Yeah. Cause it's, cause there's more required. So that is an important factor. Um, and it, again, when you break it down, cause Big goals can be, can be scary and there'd be a lot of stuff around it. But if you break it down into, you know, practices daily, weekly, monthly, right? And you have an organized schedule. Uh, I mean, time management is a huge, huge thing in success, right? Like, uh, you know, it, it becomes less scary. And if you can learn how to, like, be present and be where your feet are and then, you know, be excellent at the thing that's right in front of you, uh, as, as basic as it sounds, you know, in two to three years, you can be in a significantly different place than you are right now. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all your time and all the tips and everything. Where can people find more about you? I know you've got a whole bunch of stuff online. Yeah, there's uh, I'll, I'll kind of <laughs> share the stuff that uh, leads to other things, too. So on, on Instagram, uh, it's at Luca Hosevar. So L-U-K-A-H-O-C-E-V-A-R. Um, on YouTube, if you put in my name in, my, my channel will pop up there. Um, I have a podcast called the Vigor Life Podcast. It's heavily, I would say, uh, oriented towards coaches. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll say some fitness enthusiasts too, but definitely very uh, oriented towards coaches. And I've got a bunch of uh, courses and workshops at And uh, If you're in the area, it's uh, my gym's in Renton, which is 10 minutes from downtown Seattle. So basically Seattle uh, area. Uh, and that's VigorGroundFitness.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I would highly encourage everyone to check out all the stuff you got going on. Always great information. And thank you once again for all your time today. Really appreciate it. My pleasure, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you.